Hey everyone, this is Rodal, or Simmer Ro, as I go by on my Sims 3 website. I am starting a new series that I hope any of my followers can find useful, uh, in which I will take you with me into World Machine, Photoshop, and EA's Create a World tool for The Sims 3. Uh, and I'm going to demonstrate how to generate fractal terrains, export height maps, splat maps, and edit them to achieve different effects as well as give you some useful tips about the nature of plants, soil, and the life stages of rocks to help you make more realistic terrains. Uh, this process, while depicted as it applies to The Sims 3, will undoubtedly have some interchangeable ideas that apply to terrain creation in any engine uh, from an aesthetic standpoint, but I'm not going to talk about other uh, game creators or anything like that, like Unity. Um, just, just from an artistic standpoint, I know that these ideas and techniques will, will definitely be useful. So, um, now I, I know that The Sims 4 has been out for a long time, but I also think it'll be years if we ever are to see uh, open worlds in The Sims 4 or create a world tool for it. Um, it's not that I think The Sims 4 is a bad game overall. Uh, I'm surely fond of the rigging and the way the new Sims animate, but I just don't. I just can't do without the, the immersion in my own world. So I don't really have a reason to buy or play The Sims 4 until such an expansion exists. And I believe that the interest in Sims 3 and Create a World will persist for a long time uh, for this reason. So I don't think it's a bad time to be making this video. I, I think Create a World and Sims 3 are still going strong. So, so yeah, um, in this first video, I'm going to break down what my process is really doing for casual players who aren't familiar with the term splat map and I'm going to show you how using them saves a lot of time and provides more realistic results. I think a lot of casual players could master create a world and find it worthwhile. Uh, it's just a matter of making it less tedious because doing everything by hand really just takes too long and it doesn't produce ideal results. Uh, the procedural generator I use, in this case World Machine, is needed to export the PNG height map and splat maps that I will use to tell the textures where to go. Uh, these PNGs are imported very easily into Create a World. In the next video, I'll walk you through how I actually make them, which is also not that hard. Um, so, and at about a hundred bucks for the version of World Machine that'll allow you to make a full size world uh, at 2048 pixels across, it's actually within the reach of most people. I think of it like buying two new video games at the same time or going on a single big shopping trip. It's it's definitely something you've got a budget, but it's possible for just about anybody to get it as a birthday gift or to save up for it. So definitely World Machine is something to look into. If you want to um, have a lot of fun and create a world and make an amazing world, it's, it's so worth the investment. Uh, so, and as for Photoshop, that's, that's another story. It is pretty spendy for, uh, you know, new Photoshop, but I recommend using the GIMP. It's an image manipulation freeware, very much like Photoshop. It's really a great program, and even if some of the p tools have different names, and they're located in different places, you can almost bet that anything I do in Photoshop can also be done in the GIMP. Uh, and most of it's laid out the same. It's really kind of copying Photoshop, but it's its own program and it's a really good program. I, I almost think they're equal in quality uh, on most accounts. So, um, and now that that's all out of the way, uh, let's take a quick look at the splat maps that I have in this world here. As you can see here in this world, um, it looks pretty detailed and Really, this only took me a couple of days. Uh, I have a busy life, you know, I, it wasn't continuous work, but uh, it only took a couple of days within World Machine to create my height map and my flow charts and uh, get an idea of these flat maps. And then uh, within that amount of time, I was also able to get it into Create a World. And worked out what what uh, textures I liked, and modified them, and I got it looking like this. So 
uh, otherwise the plants that you've seen added these, these roads and everything and spawners and rocks and all this flavor stuff uh, that that took actually weeks more uh, as well as you know, the non-routable paint, I do got to say, that can be a little bit of a headache when you're creating such a detailed, rugged world, but I can show a little spoiler of that. I'm not going to get into the, the details of this particular uh, world that I've created, but you can uh, definitely learn more about it on my website once I get it up there. So uh, Now we can see the non-routable terrain paint. So, I'll get into what was going on in my head when I did this. Similar to how I did Eulokia though, so I know it should more or less work. But say if you saw something sitting on a rock, you know, like uh, I decided to put a spawner up on top of this, you know, your sim could get there, but they wouldn't route in a retarded way <laughs> up the steep part when they would probably opt to go up the ridge or something. Or down in a little uh, grid. So, yeah, that's kind of. So, yeah, but I wanted to talk about what the heck are splat maps, because I don't think people uh, who are casual players of The Sims 3 who just start playing around and create a world, I don't think they really get what that is. Some of them are like, what do you mean Photoshop? And. It just saves so much time, so I want to talk about that. So my first layer over here in the upper right is rocks, and it just covers the entire map. These rocks just take up the whole thing. And all the other layers are stacked on top. So here we have my flowchart, and what I can do is I'll show you what I have. You just import and you can go to where you've exported your flow maps. You can edit them. My original flow one, I call the erosion one here, my original flow chart looked like this. I think I think that's what it actually looks like. Now it actually turned out. It was yeah, it was erosion too. My second flow map, this lighter color. That's the cool thing. All right. So flow two. Let me just show you what I mean by how I edited them and how I got different versions. Erosion two. I did two different uh, erosions to kind of get. Um, one that was more dramatic and covered more area, and one that was more delicate. And let's go with my original. This is what it looked like to begin with, and it it was it's pretty, but it's just a little too much. You know, we're just not seeing that dark grass underneath, and it's a little too flat. As you can see, it's just fading in really gradual way, and I suppose I could be realistic, but I wanted to get more texture, so I'll import my modified version, and this is what I, my most edited, I actually went into Photoshop, I don't know if you can see it, but I went into Photoshop, and I added noise, and a Gaussian blur, and, you know, I'm going to talk about those effects later. I'm definitely going to be doing that when we're making our next world uh, in the next video. So, but I'll uh, open that. And this is the version we, we had, more or less. I edited it some in, uh, in the end. But this is just the product before I started hand painting and touching it up. And then... I'm going to talk about why it's important to do, in the, in, to just kind of wrap up my little crash course of, of the layers here in the splat maps. It is very important which order you decide to, what, what materials are stacking on top of each other, the order in which you do it, it's really important, and I'm going to show you why. If, for example, this sand was on top of these rocks, 
let's get a close-up look at these rocks where they're blending. You can see that sand is settling in between the rocks in a really realistic way. Some of it's a little bit, I don't like that, or the, it's kind of caking onto the rocks in a weird powdery way, but it's not too noticeable. It still looks pretty good. And if I was to remove the sand, let's just remove it there. And then let's add it again. Let's make layer 9 to get my sometimes sand water. And here it is, although it does not have a texture map. So import. Places. This just isn't what we're going for, is it? Just definitely no drama there. And I actually took a screenshot earlier of this. So you can see what it originally looked like as compared to what it looks like now, just not realistic. So again, how you layer it is really important. And I wanted the water, for example, to be last because what we like is how the water seems to be foggy and translucent and the rocks are sort of just hidden and fading and brought through there. If it was you know, if the rocks were on top of the water, it would look it would look like this, only the sand would be blue. It would just be yucky. So that's why how you layer your textures is really important. And I guess that covers it for this video. If you want to know about this particular world, just go ahead and visit my website. It'll be linked in the info. And I'll catch you later in World Machine.